very warmly welcome to this interspiritual gathering. Um, it is an inclusive gathering. Everyone is welcome. People of faith and people who are still thinking about it. So now in this virtual gathering, while we have some COVID restrictions that are still in place, let us make ourselves comfortable as we gather together in prayer. We come together connecting with the divine presence known by many names and none. The one light which sh shines through many lamps to hear the wisdom of the ancient and modern traditions, to be inspired through prayer, music and poetry, connecting with each other and ourselves as we find our way through this strange time in our lives. Let us honour the spark of the divine that lies within each of us. And the theme of today is transforming obstacles into seeds of awakening. And we're very honoured to have Chi Kwang Sunan, the abbess of the Sun, which is the Korean Zen Center in King Lake. There is a Buddhist prayer. May whatever circumstances arise, may they serve to awaken compassion. As parents were juggling several jobs at home and dealing with exhaustion, I recall my grandniece Mackenzie telling me on our weekly Skype that she and other children in her neighborhood had made gifts and left them on the streets for those passing by. This was their way of sharing and caring. These and countless other simpler acts of kindness were growing across the state. These generous actions in consideration for others were creating infinite seeds of virtue. In Buddhism, we call this the perfection of selfless generosity. The great Chinese sage Hui He commented that just perfecting the parami, the selfless of selfless generosity, would awaken all the other virtues doing no harm, patience, balanced effort and endurance, and meditative concentration, all leading to wisdom and engaging in compassionate actions. Doing no harm, Joan Halifax in her book on Standing on the Edge says, the way out of the storm and the mud of suffering and the way back to the freedom on the high edge of strength and courage is through the power of compassion and doing no harm. Doing no harm is working with the Buddhist precept and cultivating the Bodhisattva vow of the path of enlightened deities that which protect and nourish all life, including one's body and mind. On my walks in the forest, trees seem to walk with me, each step, each breathing in and out, as my body does. And my mind touches a myriad of forms of life and they also breathe me in. Our glances meet in the light that filters through the soft mossy bark and the small fungi. Tiny creatures enter and leave their homes in the carcass of a giant gum tree that has laid to rest since the early 1900s and since continues to provide shelter and life to infinite beings. As I walk, my conscious awareness interweaves with shape and color of the complex ecosystems as the, as the true nature on this sacred path speaks silently. Another giant stump of a gum stands proud further down in the path, still bare wounds from the woodcutter's ax. Its layer, layers of centric circles of decay in all the fallen logs and stumps here are still the homes 
and give birth to infinite creatures. Mirrored, the miracle called life is presented in a leaf in the light. And I see its whole existence supporting and evolving in relationship to everything else in its surrounds. When humans do harm to the environment, we also do harm to ourselves. When we are so challenged by circumstances, we learn many things, how nature is less biased and how it informs us of our symbiotic connections and the preciousness of life. Two informs us on how to live in harmony and balance as wings of patience. We learn new ways to communicate in families and share our love more deeply. Sadly, however, for some, abuse and addiction seem the only option available to bury the pain. A friend teaching Tai Chi in an aged care facility noted, many more in that home died of loneliness and from the lack of contact with loved ones than from the COVID related illnesses. Developing patience and equanimity. The Buddha taught right view as the first perspective on the path. This pointed to the roots of our problem leading to the right understanding of impermanence and the means of relinquishing. Our world was shaken and our daily lives disrupted. Generous acts of kindness offered many obstacles during our lockdown and raised awareness of need to grow patience. We grew to care more as the months went by, openly sharing our human flaws and our joys. Virus moves so fast, not discriminating between religion, color, nationality, the rich or the poor. However, our elders and those with disability or ill health suffered dearly. But life, even in a youth, could be taken away so quickly by corona, as in other countries, the younger and the healthier are succumbing in large numbers. We learn to enable or not to allow the knowledge from our mistakes to inform us. The scientists and the medical teams, along with politicians, were empowered to make decisions for it offered a sense of security and for some a long-awaited rest and the opportunity to rethink what is really important in life. The virus is spreading so fast in many countries Vast numbers are succumbing to it every day, and many are dying. This is very tragic and sad. However, it is important that our minds are not weakened by this sadness, and having a mind that is full of equanimity and patience brings with it great confidence. I believe we can be more effective in benefiting not only ourselves, but many others. Right effort and endurance, we become very reliant on the material progress in business and all aspects of the material world. But for many of us, we had neglected the development of the inner tranquility and, re and resilience to cope with the unexpected. We live in a belief of inherent continuity until suddenly our lives, our workplace, our daily rituals look very different. So transitioning takes time and it was very humbling. I can see, however, how many with clear intention and motivation transform their challenges and enable resourcefulness and strength to mature into wise and compassionate action. The analogy of a lotus growing out of the mud into stainless perfection of beauty and fragrance points to rising above the worldly struggles to that which nourishes and allows virtues to grow and support life. Great effort and energy was resourced in families to help educate children and keep harmony amongst, among schedules and home workplaces. So again, where it worked well, there was resilience in play. In times of great struggles, we deepen our wisdom to survive. We abandon many psychosocial and physical relationships and those I spoke with felt lighter and okay with fewer connections and engagements. By facing our limitations, a light shone on the potential and future engagements from that perspective. A well-known quote 
One moment can change a day, one day a life, and one life can change the world, suggests it's better to travel well than to arrive. Our pain is inherent in all compounded things, so we were urged by the Buddha to strive on with diligence. During the difficulties and trauma, we can act out of character and anger and confusion and fear and other strong motions become our drivers. Fear, however, is natural. It is what has us washing our hands and social distancing and wearing masks. But feelings of emotion are part of the body and mind. So rather than judging or trying to push them away, we can turn our gaze inward, still the deeper waters and see what's there. Observing and connecting with the causes of our grief, with the intentions, and with the intentions, we can at least acknowledge what is happening for us. On the footpath of the St Andrews Community Centre, a poem Poems were printed on the pavement during the corona lockdown. This one stood out for me. Walk with me by Maura Pierrot. Walk with me, it doesn't matter where or why, only that we stop now and then to realize everything we need is right here, wherever we find ourselves. Concentration and meditation, those of us who have been able to do more meditation, have developed more positive states. I'm personally less tired from not, from not having to travel so much, yet feel connected through offering a Zoom classes and to join them. Not the ideal, but engaging and giving vital support to us all. With more solitude, our practice to study our paths has opened up to a world of online teachers all with the press of a button. I'm sure we all discovered many positive things during COVID retreats, for some a great spiritual journey, for others just more attachment and craving without the means to put what we learn or what we do into practice. With renewed feeling of freedom, as we open up, we must be careful to, to give space to our stresses in daily life as they may be underpinning the true sense of fulfillment and can erode the mind of practice. In Buddhism, we learn negative states through unwholesome habit formations. Still the pain that follows can greatly seed determination. In Zen we say, great determination comes out of great difficulties and suffering, but too great determination leads, leads to a great awakening. Life at times is difficult for some and failures are very likely to occur in our lifetime. So with more determined effort, we can apply ourselves again and again. As Shunru Suzuki said, a Zen mind is a beginner's mind. So we are always learning new skills as a beginner. If the mind is humble and open, through what we have seeded in the past, it can lead to opportunities in new directions in the future. Knowledge and skills acquired through the experience or education have a practical application through understanding the subject, very important as it is keeping us safe and saving lives. But in Buddhism, the faculty of wisdom is the forerunner, leading to a true freedom in our hearts and our minds. It's this freedom that enables altruism and compassionate actions to grow. Wisdom and compassion. The Dalai Lama said, altruism and Buddhism is of the view, in Buddhism is of the view that the more care and compassion we have for the happiness and well-being of others, so too our own sense of well-being and will develop. I learned from my inquiry not knowing that this is the very foundation of the interconnectedness and altruism. Those tending to, to several jobs at home were, wore a very tired faces and others exhausted in the overload of service carried hidden burdens. For this brief time, the un, unemployed and the homeless were temporarily relieved with some extra support and shelter. When we begin to slow down and breathe, we notice the quiet, 
we stop on our walks, we take in the fresh air. But did we notice the initial lowering of the eyes lifted after some months and people looked, us, looked at us with a long smiling gaze? We began to empathize, wake up and engage in more genuine felt ways and feelings, even whilst masked and we seemed poised and ready to engage in a new world, whatever that may be. A Buddha teacher expressed, all beings, including each and every one of us, enemies and friends alike, exist in patterns of mutuality and interconnectedness by sharing their abilities in this ultimate unity. Loud fighting factions of approving or disapproving filled the news and ignited further disquiet in the already strained inner landscape of unknowns. I'm personally, however, very humbled by the broad efforts of conforming, containing, certainly not easy for most. Iris Murdoch defines this humbling as a selfless respect for reality. The practice of bearing witness calls for us to be present to what is as it unfolds. If we see it without judgment or any attachment to outcomes, a quiet, observing, spacious mind knows when to act and when to be still. Shanti Davis said, refusing to help somebody who is suffering is like a hand refusing to remove a thorn from its foot. The hand doesn't say to the foot, this is my pain, nor does the hand need to be thanked by the foot. They are part of the same body. We react with horror when we see, neg see the neglect that is causing more suffering of others because to empathize is the fundamental virtue of our humanity. We have been waiting to get on with our lives and in hope of the past and hope our past stresses somehow vanish. This can be a false sense of security. Wanting for something to happen during a transit gap is never a certainty. However, the growth of numbers of jobless and those facing homelessness is a certainty. Those in part, though in part the environment has seen less onslaught, greed, climate change and serious ecological issues have not gone away. They are very real, made by us and affecting all. Uncertainty during these times need the skillful means to courage and courage for us all to take more responsibility, both personally and collectively, in moving forward together. Shanti Davis says, if there is something you can change, change it. So no need to worry. If there's something you can't change, useless worrying, for you can't change it. Still, I think we can try. I'll finish this short talk with a COVID-19 haiku from one of the Aussie haikuers, post-virus lockdown, a world of warmth together in body and spirit. So thank you for staying with me and listening to this. And I wish you many blessings. This next poem is an outpicturing of what it looks like, of what the part of the psyche that is greedy and fearful looks like. Yeah, we need to look at that, don't we? There is a small green island where one white cow lives alone, a meadow of an island, The cow grazes till nightfall full and fat. But during the night, she panics and grows thin as a single hair. What shall I eat tomorrow? There's nothing left. By dawn, the grass has grown up again, waist high. The cow starts eating. And by dark, 
the meadow is clipped short. She's full of strength and energy, but she panics in the dark as before and grows abnormally thin overnight. The cow does this over and over, and this is all she does. She never thinks this meadow has never failed to grow back. Why should I be afraid each night that it won't? The cow is the bodily soul. The island field is this world where that grows lean with fear and fat with blessing, lean and fat. White cow, don't make yourself miserable. White cow, don't make yourself miserable with what's to come or not to come. Take a few deep breaths and a moment of silence before we offer our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers for compassion, justice, and for inner and outer peace. We come together in spirit in gratitude for the many blessings we have received during this time of COVID restrictions, blessings which we may have overlooked until this moment. Let us take a minute to offer our silent prayers of gratitude. We pray for those who have suffered dearly, for those who have lost their employment, business and income. We pray for ourselves who may be suffering financially. May we all find within us the inner tranquility that brings resilience, new vision and hope. We pray for those who grieve for loved ones, those who passed on alone during the pandemic, and we pray that they may receive loving kindness. We pray for those who feel alone. May they hear the voice of their inner friend and find companionship. We pray for our government, that our government will act with compassion and justice so that all people may have food, shelter and health care. We pray for the whole world, especially the nations experiencing escalating violence and massive COVID infections. We pray that nations and decision makers may act wisely to protect their people so that the people may thrive and peace may prevail. We pray for the healing of ourselves, that we may develop patience and equanimity, that we may know when to act and when to be still, to travel well rather than to arrive. May we see the beauty and abundance of nature around us, remembering always the inner well of peace that lies deep within us. <laughs> 